Chapter 5 Trenton Black could not believe his eyes. They were drawn to the magnificent vehicle ditched on his property, an Italian manufactured masterpiece, an automobile Lamborghini, if he remembered correctly, the birth child of Ferruccio Lamborghini, the auto magnet of the 1960s. He remembered the first time he had laid eyes on the automobile. It had been at a car show. He had only been a boy, but the image of the sports car had been permanently stamped onto his brain. This was obviously a newer version, he thought, as he read its name lettered across the fin of the vehicle, Verneo. Was it the Italian word for poison? If it was, it suited the roadster. He knew it was deadly to drive and dangerous to look at. How had it gotten into his yard? Where was its driver? He searched the yard until his eyes landed on a woman sitting under a tree with his daughter, Yasmin. They seemed to be talking, laughing. He was stunned. See, Daddy, I told you it was here, said Ami, breaking his concentrated stare. She was too low to the ground to notice the growing anger in her father's eyes as he took her by the hand and began striding across the yard, half dragging, half pulling her along. You okay, Daddy? asked Amin, running to keep up. She also looked toward the tree. Everything will be fine, baby girl. I'm just checking on your sister. Yasmin, get over here right now! The young girl's head shot up. Her eyes and ears were alert to the emotion in her father's voice. Concern entered her eyes. She was in big trouble. Uh-oh, she muttered and jumped to her feet. Yasmin looked at the woman on the ground. Her eyes apologized to Aaron before she darted in the direction of her father. He looked like a giant. She wasn't afraid of him. But she did respect his authority. I found her, Daddy. She was in an accident. I can see that, he said, embracing his other daughter with his free hand. Where is your sister, Ebony? Still sleeping, I think. She stayed up late watching music videos. Should I get her? No, but take your sister into the house. I need to talk to our guest. Do you know her name? He asked, looking at his middle daughter. Miss Airy, she's a surgeon. I like her, Daddy, said Yasmin, beseechingly. She had the accident because she was sad. He frowned at his daughter. Did she tell you that? Yes. Then she whispered to her father. Are you going to lock her up? Right now, I only want to talk to her. I'd like to get her some help, he said in a cool voice. Take on me into the kitchen. You both need to eat breakfast. I'll be in the house shortly. Trenton Black said nothing to the woman as he watched his daughters open the back door. He noticed Rusty trying to get out, but Yasmin held him back. He smiled reassuringly at his daughters, but his eyes were cold, hard. He focused them on Aaron as she stood. Her legs were stiff, unsteady. She braced herself against the old tree for support. She looked down at the vodka bottle. She knew he saw it too. Do you own a gun? He asked. His voice seemed to measure at minus seven degrees Celsius. His words carried a cutting force, which sliced through her body. The wound stung like razor cuts. Yes, it's in my car, she said, glancing at the Veneo, under the driver's seat. She stopped speaking. She searched his eyes. Her own grew huge with alarm. I left it there last night. I carry it for protection. Do you know where it is now, he asked. It's not still there, she asked, slowly realizing it was no longer in her car. I have it. You? 
My daughter woke me with it this morning. Its barrel was aimed at my chest. She could have shot me with it or worse. She could have played with it and killed herself or her sisters. He paused. I could have lost so much in seconds. I didn't know. I, I, I am. He surveyed her carefully, his dark eyes missing nothing. He noted the expensive necklace, the fur coat. You are a drunken little rich girl who almost cost me my family. How foolish are you? Children live in this neighborhood. Firearms are never supposed to be left out in the open. Weren't you trained? Do you even have a license to carry that thing? I, I'm sorry. I, she stopped apologizing. Yes, I have a gun permit. Is it registered in this state? She nodded. Trenton Black observed the look of dismay on the young doctor's face. It did not move him in the least. He ran his eyes over her caramel complexion, honey brown eyes, and the minute mole on the side of her mouth. She was exquisite to look at, just as intriguing to his eyes as her car had been. Both appeared dangerous, deadly. Miss Airy, that is your name, isn't it? She nodded and spoke. It is actually Aaron Simpkins. Dr. Aaron Simpkins, he continued, I am taking you into police custody. You are currently under arrest for driving while intoxicated, reckless endangerment of life, destruction of personal property, and failure to properly secure a firearm. You have the right to remain silent. Aaron listened to the memorandum rights, and for the first time in weeks, Marari Varadaraj was not the center of her attention. It was the angry police officer who stood before her wearing a leather jacket, pajama bottoms, and slippers.